This video extends the exercises created as part of the Dettoberfest Cloud API's virtual event. We're going to go through exercise 08, which is the second exercise of the authentication, refresh token, and data pagination with the SAP Arriba APIs. So let's navigate to it. In this exercise, we're going to be talking about data pagination with SAP Arriba APIs. If you've been following the, the previous exercises, you'll now know how to authenticate against the SAP Arriba APIs. So in this exercise, we'll be looking at how to retrieve large amounts of data by using a mechanism known as pagination. After completing the steps in this exercise, you'll know what pagination in an API is, what a pagination token is for, and how pagination has been implemented in the SAP Arriba APIs. In order to be able to complete the exercise, we first need to check the prerequisites. So the prerequisites for this exercise are having uh, Python 3 installed, also um, having a virtual environment for Python, having an approved SAP Arriba developer application with access to the Analytica reporting API. In my environment here on the right, I've already have Python and I've installed a virtual environment. Uh, but in order to for us to be able to create the virtual environment, all we need to run is this command that you have here. So I'll do that, copy that, and run it. It will automatically activate my Python virtual environment. Now that I've completed uh, the prerequisites, let's go back to the exercise. Now we're in step one of the exercise. So what is pagination? If you're not familiar with the concept of pagination in API, I'm sure that you already use some form of pagination in the past. For example, when you use your favorite search engine, let's say you search for something like SAP Deptoverfest, click the search button, and then the web page will end up rendering uh, some of the results. It will not return all of the results. So you go through the results in the first page. If you don't find what you're looking for, then you will need to click on page two. If you're still unable to find uh, what you're after, then you will need to click on page three and so on. Pagination in API pretty much works the same. Instead of uh, clicking through pages, you're basically programmatically, programmatically calling different pages. Unfortunately, there's no standard way of uh, implementing pagination in API. But uh, the process followed by different APIs is pretty much uh, the same. In order uh, for you to call different pages, you will need to specify a pagination token. We will look what a pag pagination token looks like. And then um, using a pagination token, you will be able to retrieve additional data from, um, from an API. If we go to the help documentation of the SAP Arriva Analytical Reporting APIs, and look at the synchronous API, we can see how we can specify um, a pagination token. We can see that for the synchronous analytical reporting API, um, we can specify uh, a realm. We also need to specify a filter in order to know uh, the data that we want to retrieve. We also include a view template. Uh, in this case, it's just uh, the template name. Um, and then, for example, we can um, when calling this API, we can read, we can retrieve the total number of records that can be included in our results set, which is basically the combination of the view template plus the filters. Um, and apart from that, we can paginate uh, the the response. So in order for us to be able to paginate the response, uh, we need to specify a page token. This page token will be included within um, the response of our, of our first request. So let's go back to our exercise. In this exercise, uh, we've included a little diagram which basically explains how pagination works. You can see that in our first request, there is no page token. In the response, there is a page token included. So if we want to retrieve more data, we need to include this page token in our, in our next request. So in request in part number three, uh, we can see that we are specifying a page token. In the response, there's another page token included. So if we want to retrieve more data, then we need to include this in our next request. When we do this API call, there is no page token in the response. What that means is that there is no more data that we can retrieve from, from the API. 
so we can stop uh, paginating. Now that we're in step two of our exercise, we just need to set up the SAP Arriva API details in the script. So for that, we will reuse uh, one script that was created for exercise 07, which is the Arriva authentication script. So let's go to the to the scripts here and copy the script. So I'll copy that and I'll paste it within this. We're going to use this in order to authenticate against the API so that our pagination script only worries about pagination and it will reuse basically the access token that the Arriva authentication script uh, returns. Okay. Uh, we also need to create a .mvm um, file, which will need to include our realm, uh, the auth details for, for our application, like the API auth URL, the API key, the base64 auth string, and the API URL. This API URL will be for the analytical reporting API, uh, the synchronous uh, analytical reporting API. So I prepared uh, this .m file before. Uh, so you can see here how I have the details for my application already there. This will be similar in your case. If you aren't familiar with the SAP Arriva Developer Portal uh, or how to create an application and its approval process, I will encourage you to check out this uh, YouTube playlist, which includes the whole process of how to create an application and go through the whole approval process. Now let's go to step three of the exercise. Now we're on step three of the exercise. We're going to explore the Arriva pagination script. So let's open the Arriva pagination script. This script has two run modes. You can uh, do a count of all the objects that you can retrieve, and then you can paginate uh, the response. You can see that we have a method that's called get access token. This is basically just reading a file that the authentication script will end up uh, saving for us, and then retrieving the access token from it. So just reusing that. Uh, then we are calling the analytical reporting API, and this is the one that's responsible for doing that, that, that API call. Uh, in order to be able to, to call that API, we need to send an access token. We need to specify an API key. And then uh, we need to also specify our realm and some filters. The view template, as explained before. If a page token is included uh, in the request, then we need to include it in the, in the URL. If not, then we can just send this as blank. There's also an opportunity of uh, saving the output of, uh, of this file uh, that, that's returned by the synchronous API. Uh, and you'll see how, how we can do that. In the case of the count part of uh, the API, we are going to display the maximum uh, number of records per page and also the total number of pages in the result set and the total number of records in the result set, which basically is the number of objects that we can retrieve from the API. The paginate uh, method uh, will be able to basically go through all the data that's available for our view template. So if our view template has 2000 records, then uh, this method will be able to iterate through, through all the different pages and retrieve all the data available for us. Okay, so now let's go to step four. Now we're on step four of the exercise find out how many records we can retrieve using the view template and filter combination. For this, we're going to use the, we're going to run the pagination script in count mode so that we can just retrieve the total number of records. But before that, we need to actually re, um, authenticate our, uh, against our API. So for that, we're going to do Python, a rebound authentication, and we're going to specify as our mode loop so that we this is running continuously and retrieving our, our access tokens. You can see that it has created this um, dash token file, and this is the access token that the reporting API will end up using uh, to, to retrieve data. So let's open a new terminal so that we can uh, get the, 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 the count script uh, running. Let's copy this command here to retrieve the number of records that we have available for our object. You can see that there are a total of 135 objects available for my query. In this case, I'm calling this view template and I'm specifying that filter. If you're using a different uh, view template, then it is likely that your filters will vary. So you will need to check the definition of your view template. But in the case of the sourcing project sourcing system view, 
these filters that are here will work. Also, the amount of data available for you will vary depending on the filters that you specify. So keep that in mind. So as mentioned before, in this case, we have 135 records. Um, by default, uh, the synchronous API, if we don't specify um, the page size, then the default is uh, 50. So in this case, if we just paginate the API, uh, we will end up making three requests. The first request will return 50 records, the second another 50 records, and the last one will return 35 records. Okay. So let's go to step five. Now, in step five of the exercise, we're going to paginate the records available for our view template filter combination. Okay. So we already know that we have 135 records and we just want to paginate the response. Uh, okay. So in order to be able to do that, we are going to copy this command here, paste it on my command line. And you can see that it is basically the same command as the one for count. The only difference is the mode that uh, instead of it being uh, paginate, previously it was count. Uh, also, another thing that I want to do now is that I want to save uh, the output. So I'll add that flag, dash dash save. And what this will do is that it will actually save the response uh, from the API. Okay, this is good. All right, so let's analyze uh, the output. You can see that in my first request, there is no page token specified, okay? But in the response, there is this page token. So in my next request, if I want to retrieve additional data, then I need to include this uh, page token. So you can see it that that page token is specified there, right? In this request, there is also another page token included. In that case, if I want more data, then I just need to include it in my request. In that last request, there is no page token. So there's no page token, there's no more data for, for us to retrieve from the API, so we can stop our process. So let's have a look at one of these payloads that was returned uh, by the API. So this is my payload. If we go to the end of the payload, you can see that there is a page token included. This value that you see here, it's where we included in one of the, our requests. You can see it that we have it here where we specify our page token. So now we made it to the end of the exercise. We've covered what pagination is and how, and how it has been implemented in the SAP Arrive APIs. Also, we know where to look for a pagination token. This might vary between um, different APIs, but in essence, it's the same. You will need a page token in order to retrieve additional data from the API. We've also included some questions as part of the exercise. So I will encourage you to go through these um, questions as it will help you understand further what pagination is and how to do pagination against an API. Thank you.